Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be finishing our Sew With Me series blocks and putting them into a beautiful quilt. So I'm going to show you a few different ways on how you can finish up this quilt. So we have 12 quilt blocks or you might even have more than that if you've made both the six and a half and twelve and a half inch sizes. So that gives you a lot of flexibility with how you lay this out and how you finish it. I'm going to show you today how to finish it using the 12, 12 and a half inch blocks and it's just going to be so fast and easy and you have a bunch of different options. Whenever I am putting together a quilt that has blocks that are all the same size like this one, that's where I start to take liberties with my sashing and my borders. That means they're all the same size. I can arrange them however I want and I can do whatever I want for sashing and quarter stones and fun things like that. So for this particular one, if you've made all 12 of the 12 and a half inch blocks, I would recommend that you put them in a layout where you have three blocks across and four blocks vertically. That's gonna give you a nice kind of rectangle shape for your finished quilt. Now option one is you can sew those blocks together just as is and have a smaller quilt. And don't worry, I have our trusty companion Jax. He has literally taken over my chair, so he's here. You just can't see him because he's behind me. Oh, and before we get started, the quilt on the wall, because you guys always ask, is called Happy Granny. That is my newest quilt pattern. It's charm pack friendly, it's super easy, beginner friendly, and super cute. So all that information will be in the description box below the video. Just click show more and you'll find information on everything I'm talking about today along with our PDF pattern down there. If you're on an iPad or a tablet or a phone, there's a little drop down arrow on the right hand side of your video. If you click that, all of the good information will come up. Okay, so let's talk about some different ways that you can finish this project. Now, if you made all 12 of the 12 and a half inch blocks, I would recommend that you lay them out so there are three blocks going across and four blocks going vertically. That's gonna give you a nice kind of rectangular shape quilt. If you made both the six and a half and 12 and a half, then you can kind of play with that a little bit. You can do a 12 and a half and then maybe two six and a halves and a 12 and a half and two six and a halves. Or you could do a 12 and a half, four of the six and a halves together, which will give you a 12 and a half inch block and then a 12 and a half and just kind of alternate them so that they are um, looking really fun and colorful. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it if you made 12 of the blocks because that's gonna be a little bit easier. And um, whenever I have a quilt where I have all the blocks that are the same size, that's where I can take fun liberties with my sashing and my borders to make it whatever size I want because they're all the same size. You can lay it out however you want. So for mine, I'm gonna do the three across and four up and down just like I said. And option number one would just be to sew all those blocks together as is, no sashing, no borders, nothing. That would result in a quilt that's about 36 by 48, so a cute little wall hanging, maybe even kind of like a crib size quilt, um, or you could throw it on the back of your couch or something like that. Now, if you wanted to make that a little bit bigger, you could just add some borders to it. And however um, large the borders that you add, obviously are gonna increase the size of your quilt. Option number two would be to put some sashing between. And you can just do completely plain sashing. I have 12 and a half inch blocks, so I need strips that are 12 and a half inches tall. And then to make it more interesting, you can put a colored cornerstone in between each of those sashing strips. And let's just say you did um, three inch sashing strips all the way around and between your blocks, that would give you a quilt that's about 48 by 63. So just by adding sashing, we've already really increased the size of our quilt. Now we can take that and add some borders to it to make it even larger. And whenever I'm doing borders on a quilt like this, I like to do the first border in the same fabric as all of my background fabric. In this case, it's kind of scrappy, but it's still that light cream color. Doing that just kind of accentuates the center of the quilt and makes it pop a little bit more rather than putting a colored border right up next to your blocks. So I always do one border, usually a two and a half inch width strip. So it's a two inch border when it's finished. And I think that just offsets it nicely. That gives you an extra four inches on your quilt all the way around. And then from there, I'll usually do a thinner border, maybe cut it at one and a half inches so it's one one inch finished and then from there I'll do another border that's really wide so like six and a half inches so that right there has increased our quilt by 12 inches for the six and a half inch border another one inch so we're at 13 inches now and then another two inches so we're at 15 inches increased just by adding some sashing and borders now, if you did that, which is what we're gonna do today, you all end up with a quilt that's about 64 by 79. So that gives you actually a fairly decent sized quilt. You could put that on a bed or a couch and it would just make it so pretty. So as you can see, there's a lot of different options. So in today's video, I am gonna show you how to do the sashing. We're not gonna do plain cornerstones though. We're gonna do something really fun. We're gonna do little nine patches in the cornerstones and then we're gonna do three strips 
for the sashing so that it really kind of accentuates and frames each of our blocks that we made. Now this might look like a lot of cutting and sewing, but it's actually not. We're gonna strip piece all of these together and it's just gonna be so fast. So what we're gonna do first is make sure you download your PDF. It has all the instructions on how many strips you need to cut, what size you need to cut them and all of that. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have chosen my fabric and this is just the background fabric that I chose to use and my accent. So from each of these, I followed the instructions on the download and I cut several one and a half inch width strips. So they're just one and a half inches wide and all I did was opened up my fabric. This is my salvage edge. So my fabric is folded in half here. So from selvage to selvage and I just trimmed off several one and a half inch wide strips. And all that information again is on the pattern. So you're gonna to wanna to do that. And then I just sewed them together. So I made several strip sets that have the background fabric, the accent, and then the background. And then you'll need two strip sets that are opposite of this one. So the accent, the background, and the accent. So you're gonna sew two strip sets that look like this. And then I think you need 12 strip sets that look like this. I can't remember for sure, so um, follow the instructions on the pattern. So I just sewed them end to end and I didn't even really do that good of a job at lining up my raw edges down here. I just put them right sides together and sewed all of them at once so that I now have two different strip sets. So from our strip sets, we'll just move this one out of the way. I'm just gonna take my ruler and for these, I like to have this six and a half by 12 inch ruler. And then I also like to have my five and a half or six and a half by six and a half square. Uh, I like having a square ruler, it just makes life a little bit easier. And then of course I have my pins. So then I just line it up on my strip set here and I'm just using the lines on my ruler and just lining them up with this accent piece. When you're done, it'll be one inch wide. So you can just use that to line up. And then I'm just going to trim off down here. So I'm just gonna trim off that raw edge and toss it. And then because my strips are 12, or my blocks are 12 and a half inches wide, now I can just, that's all lined up, now I can just straighten it up again, <laughs> trim that off at 12 and a half inches. And so from one strip set, you're gonna get three of these 12 and a half inch pieces and then as soon as I get through those let's go ahead and cut the others so there's two and then I should be able to get one more out of this okay so there's my three that I'm going to get from that one with the fabric and now I have this little bit left over so now I can just take it and cut some one and a half inch wide strips so there's one two, and I think I can get three out of this, three. And I can't quite get another one and a half inch out of that one, so this is just waste. Okay, so from each strip set, you're gonna get three of these 12 and a half inch pieces and three of your little one and a half inch pieces. And so you're gonna follow the instructions on how many you need to cut of those in the pattern. And then from the other strip set, we just need a bunch of one and a half inch pieces. And I'll show you why. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just line up one of the horizontal lines on my ruler with this seam and then line up this edge. And this edge is already cut off nice and straight, so because I've already used some of this. So I can just go ahead and trim off whatever I need off of that. And you're gonna need two of these strip sets to get the correct amount of little pieces. So once you've cut those and these, now we can just put them together in nine patches really easily. So we're gonna sew these together just like this and then now we'll have our finished nine patch block. Now, one of the tips with this, whenever you're doing this kind of binding, it doesn't matter what color you're using, I just um, make sure that I'm pressing to the darker fabric. So if you'll notice these seams are pressed inwards toward that dark fabric. On this one, I pressed outwards towards the darker fabric. So always press towards your darker fabric on these and then when you go to put them together, they're gonna nest perfectly because when you put one of these strips next to one of these, this strip is pressed towards the blue and these two are pressed towards the blue. So you'll be able to see 
that those seams are going opposite directions and they'll nest perfectly. So that's kind of the key to doing this. Everything will nest really nicely if you just press towards that dark fabric. And to sew them together, all I'm gonna do is just put these little pieces together just like this. I'll make sure that my seams are nested there. See how the seams are going in opposite directions. And then I'll go ahead and just throw a pin on each of those seams and that just holds it together. Now, by the way, when I'm doing a bunch of these and I have this all over at my machine, I don't always pin them. I'll usually just kind of put them together and then just put them right under my machine and start sewing. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this to my machine and I will sew down this edge using a one quarter of an inch seam allowance and then come back and add this piece to the other side and then we'll have our cute little nine patch block. And then once that's done, we're ready to put our quilt together. So this is such an easy process. All I do is choose my layout for my big blocks and then I will assemble them by rows. So the first row will be a nine patch, a strip set, a nine patch, a strip set, a nine patch, a strip set, and a nine patch. And you're gonna make five of those rows. And that's just gonna be your horizontal sashing rows. The next rows are gonna be the rows that have your block on them. And you're gonna sew one of your sashing pieces, a block, a sashing piece, a block, a sashing piece, a block, and a sashing piece. And you're gonna make four rows of those. So then all you have to do is put those rows together alternating the horizontal sashing strips with your block rows and then just sew them all together. And then when you press those sashing rows and your completed block rows, press everything towards the sashing strips. That's gonna make those nest when you go to put those rows together. Once you've got all of your rows sewn together, you can either be done there or you can take it another step and add those borders that we talked about. Now I'm not gonna show you how to add borders in this video. I have another video that I will link right here that will show you how to add borders. Um, that one I did on a smaller scale so you can see everything on camera. It's really hard to show how to add borders to an entire quilt but I do it the exact same way. So I will go ahead and reference you that if you would like to add some borders to this quilt. I added borders to mine, so I'm finishing at about 64 by 79, which is a really great size quilt. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Go ahead and get your quilt tops finished, put together. Make sure to send me pictures or tag me on social media. I'm at Erica Arndt on Instagram. That's the easiest way to um, send a picture. You can just post your picture and then just Tag, just write in the text underneath the picture at Erica Arndt and it will tag me and then I'll be able to see that. And I can reshare it on my account so everybody can see what you guys have been making. So I would love to see all of your finished quilt tops. Everybody's using different fabric and I'm assuming you guys are all gonna do different kind of sashing borders. Um, some might not do any at all. Some might do something fancier than what I did here on today's video. Either way, make it your own and have fun with it. Go ahead and finish off your quilt tops. I am going to refer you to my how-to based quilt and bind videos. I will link those below this. So I'm not gonna do that for this quilt top, but I will be back here next week because I had some leftover blocks just from testing and all of that. And I made some extra fun projects just out of all of my leftover scraps and pieces. And I wanna share those with you. Plus I will be sharing my finished quilt once it's all quilted and bound. So stay tuned for next video and we'll show you all of our finishes. And then because I know some of you will ask, we will be doing a new series. Since it's kind of getting late in the year and people were confused this year because I had started this so long in August of last year, I'm gonna wait, we're gonna start it in January, but I do have some other fun videos for the rest of this year um, and projects and things like that that I will be sharing. So stick around for those and then stay tuned for January, 2023 and we'll start another block of the month series. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making these videos for you. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time.